in a Kettering system, switching of the DC voltage on the primary side of things is done by a set of points on the negative side. It's inside the distributor here. So if we pop the cap over to one side, pull off our rotor button, you can see that that's the set of points right there. As the motor rotates, this shaft here rotates as well. You can probably see that it's got little cams on it, and that in turn opens and closes the points as it goes around. Some testing you need to do when you're inside the distributor is, for instance, look at the shaft. Is there any wear on the shaft? Push it from side to side. If there's wear, that will change the dwell angle, which in turn will change the timing. There's two main ways that you can check for the gap at the points there and make sure that they are set correct. One is by the use of a feeler gauge, the other is by the use of a dwell meter. According to ye old workshop manual here, going back in time, this one is a 3.3 engine or a 202. If we come down here, we can see that the gap, the uh, distributor gap, the points gap is 0.55 of a mil and the dwell angle is 30 to 35 um, degrees. That's what we'll be focusing on. To make sure that we have the points appropriately opened, we have to turn the engine over so that the lobe, the little block there, is on top of the lobe. So it's just off for now, just a fraction off. I'll see if I can rotate the engine. As you can see, this takes a little while to set up, so the other method is a lot better. But I'll show you this method just so that you can understand uh, one method of doing it. And we're looking at 0.55 of a mil, or 22 thou in this case. What we want to do is just drag it through the points, or the gap that's in the points, and you just want to make sure that there's a little drag, but you don't want to see that the points open and close like that. You want to make sure that they don't move. And in this case, look, it's set pretty well. You guys had a look at it before, and it wasn't too far out. It's just fractionally tight, but there is a tolerance that you're allowed anyway. Remember, it's 30 to 35 degrees that you're allowed, so there is a tiny bit of tolerance there. Let's see what it reads on the dwell meter. So now we're going to use the dwell meter. You can see I've got my meter here. It's got the little angle side on it there. And down here, you probably can't see, but I've got it set to the six-cylinder range as you can see there. So we'll just have a look and see. Remember, it's meant to be roughly around about 30 to 35. Got the ignition on, we'll just crank it. And it's just a fraction under. So we probably need to uh, close that gap just a smidge to see if we can uh, remedy that situation. I'll just close the points, just an absolute smidge. And it's done by undoing this screw here, just a smidge, and then you can see these two little lumps and that groove, and you can adjust it either way to either open it or close it without uh, doing it excessively and messing, up, messing it up. So I'm just going to uh, close the points a fraction, hopefully, and see if we can get that reading a bit better than it was. As you can tell, it's very fussy, and it's a laborious task to do, so it takes a long time to set up these points. Um, experience helps, but it still takes time. Let's have a look at our reading now. Doesn't look like I adjusted it much at all, does it? Let's try again. Make sure that your ignition's always turned off when you do this, guys, otherwise you might end up getting yourself a zap. There we go, that's looking better, isn't it? Roughly about 30 to 35 settings. And I will uh, stop now before we flatten the battery. Okay, timing is next. Timing is everything.